kickoff and the American Football League is in Boston. September 9, 1960 sees the first game in the new professional football league at Boston University Field. Fast action, skill and precision teamwork bring spectacular thrills to the fans. Professional football at its exciting best. The Boston Patriots mean many things to the city in its far-flung suburbs. Entertainment with an accent on great sportsmanship that brings with it excitement and the economic benefits of increased business, as well as added prestige for all New England. But all this didn't happen by chance. There's a history of events. The American Football League was conceived in Texas in January 1959, born in Chicago in August 1960. Boston became the eighth team in the league in November. A talent hunt brought into the Patriot camp some of the best players from both pro and college teams across the country. A head coach and a top coaching staff assembled and the myriad tasks of whipping a new team into shape began. Training, practice, exhibition games. The important problem of a home field was solved through the cooperation of the city of Boston and Boston University. And a permanent place to practice in the historic town of Concord. The sports public was enthusiastic. The press too. Everyone was optimistic. And behind it all, the million dollar backing of 10 New England businessmen, sportsmen to a man. The 10 owners with director William Kimball, representing some 1,600 loyal fans who bought non-voting stock in the club, meet frequently on policy and financial matters. They're well known in sports and business circles. Men like the little professor, Dom DiMaggio, Joseph E. Sullivan of Lowell, Dean Boylan of Milton, Hotel executive Paul Sonnebeck, Edgar L. Turner of the 7-Up Corporation, George L. Sargent of Dover, Edward McMahon from Down, Maine, from Easton, Massachusetts, John S. Ames, Jr., the director, William Kimball, Daniel F. Marr, a former Braves backer, and William Sullivan, president of the Boston Patriots, whose dream of pro football in Boston brought these men together in equal partnership. time on Friday night and the crowds gather at the ticket windows at Boston University Field, pass through the gates and enter into the excitement of professional football. Tonight promises a thrilling contest with the Patriots playing the Dallas Texans, a crucial game in the series. Baron Hugo, the popular band leader, keeps the fans entertained right up to the toss for gold. Patriots took a fast lead in the first half to score 13 to nothing with a ball on their own 45-yard line. It's Butch Song and the Miller. Miller out of bounds on the 50-yard line. With five minutes left in the half, the Patriots still in possession. Song and looking for his receiver. It's Colclo in Dallas territory, down on the 46-yard line. three minutes, the Patriots drive down the field. And it's the Patriots' ball on the eight-yard line. Song and Fakes looks for a receiver. And it's away to Jimmy Coco in the end zone for the touchdown. A beautiful fake with Christie pulling the defense to the right. Patriots 19, Dallas nothing. The Patriots converted and Dallas took the kickoff. Driving back. Until now, just seconds to go on the half. Dallas on the half-yard line. Ennis carrying... He made it, and the Texans break the ice. The half ended with the Patriots out in front, 20 to 7. Halftime at Patriots games is a showcase for talent in the greater Boston area. Bands, drill teams, entertainment. This is the famous Boston Latin School band. These young ladies are from Roslindale High. It's a little cool out there, even for synthetic grass skirts, but the fans love it. In the Patriots' locker room at halftime, there's an opportunity for trainers to check the players. The fellows relax. A conference between the coach and the quarterback. And a little refreshment for energy. But there's no letdown, and the players are ready to go back in the field to steamroll the next touchdown. 
It's a fighting team of Patriots coming out for the second half. In the third quarter, third down, seven to go. Patriots ball on their 37. Christie and Miller in the backfield. Songens pass to Johnson. That's Christie coming around for the handoff. Down to the 41-yard line. Not quite enough for a first down, but the Patriots are on their way. A few plays later, first and ten on the Dallas 11. The pass this time to Christie on the six-yard line, but Smokey Stover right there to stop him. It's second and goal to go for the Boston Patriots. Capaletti replaces Jimmy Colclaw. Songens pass this time to Joe Johnson in the end zone for the touchdown. And it's the Patriots ball game, 26-7 in the third quarter. Capaletti will attempt the extra point. It's a fake, a pitch out to Capaletti, runs the right side, and he's over for two points. intercepting a pass in the third quarter the Patriots take over on the 45 the handoff to Christie Christie doesn't run he throws to Tony Stevens down the sidelines it's good with a score 28 to 7 Patriots ball on the 25 the handoff to Crawford and he breaks free around the right side look at him go all the way the Wyoming Cowboy Jimmy Crawford in a sensational 38 yard touchdown run Last quarter, the score 42 to 7. No longer a question of who, only by how much. Dallas ball on the five yard line. Davidson to Abner Haynes. Capaletti drops him on the three yard line. One minute left to play in the game, and the Dallas threat just to close the gap. Robinson and Burford flanking for Dallas. Davidson hand off to Spikes, and he's over for a touchdown. Dallas converted, making it Patriots 42, the Texans 14. It's a jubilant crowd, and they want more. Less than a minute to play. Curly Johnson kicking off for Dallas. High and end over end. Ron Burton on the 10-yard line, and he's off. Watch him go. 25, 30, into Dallas territory, and Joe Bookman finally brings him down from behind on the 35. A 65-yard run back. Final score, Patriots 42, the Texans 14. A wild finish and a game one. It's a happy team that leaves the playing field this night through a crowd of enthusiastic fans that spilled out onto the field to congratulate their favorites. And in the locker room after the game, high humor and high jinks to work off the excitement and the tension. But win or lose, after every game the Patriots play, Lou Saban calls for this moment of silent prayer. Patriot players have taken up permanent residence in Greater Boston. The historic town of Concord is home to Captain Tony Sardisco. Tony follows the financial news with close interest. He and his family have been living in Concord since he was signed by the Patriots last year. This is little Madeline at nine months. She's interested in everything that goes on. If this is a party, she wants an invitation. Mrs. Sardisco is the former Julie Tutko of Linden, New Jersey. Now, with a little bit of help from the professional, little Madeline makes a try for a first down. The National Guard Armory in Concord, where fighting patriots have met before, is the Boston Patriots practice headquarters. Here the chalk talk, pep talk, and straight from the shoulder talk of Patriots coaches whips the team into shape. The mistakes in the last game they played are underscored and corrections made. The strength and weakness of the next opponent is explored. And the strategy designed to lead to victory is planned. 
Uh, we're going to make some adjustments on our special teams. We're going to have to work on it. Lou Saban is a hard-working coach. He means business. So when he talks to the players, he lays it on the line. Now, Lee is a different type thrower. Lee goes for the deep shots. And I think that in the case of Blanda, he goes for the short stuff, as was shown in the L.A. game. So we'll go to work and see if we can't uh, set up two types of defense, at least two different ideas of thinking against Lee and one against Blanda. On the PAT, we're going to make one change. Tony more than likely will be in the offensive line. So consequently, Lofton go to the right-end spot. Bob D. move over to the left-end spot. Those are the changes. We're going to work on them today. So we'll take a look at this film and uh, go to work. Movies of the games, their own and those of their opponents with other teams, help the men study the offensive and defensive tactics they'll face and determine what happens on the practice field. Later, across the street in the Emerson School playground, the Patriots work out in practice sessions. Coach Lou Saban watches as the squad limbers up. Then there's kicking and passing practice, ball handling and running. Not just good, it's got to be the best. Coach Jerry Smith puts the defensive men through their paces and discusses their problems. Then it's into formation and run some plays. This is the kind of opponents the rest of the league faces. Big, fast, and good. Whip Songen takes it from center, lets one go, and connects. The nerve center of the Patriots Ball Club is in Kenmore Square, Boston. Here, the vast, detailed organizational business is carried on. The purchasing, correspondence, publicity, travel arrangements, tickets. Pretty receptionist Marilyn Sanford keeps the correspondence rolling out. And Joan Parker's is the voice you may hear when you call Congress 2, 1776. It's rumored that ticket manager John Fitzgerald will accept your order for season tickets just about any time. General Manager Ed McKeever is an old hand at football problems. Anything from getting a new player to flying the team all over the country. Flying is a large part of the Patriots' schedule. California, Colorado, Texas, and New York are on the schedule for home games of the other American Football League clubs. Wives and sweethearts see the players off. This time to Buffalo, then Dallas and Houston before they return home. That's four weeks away. Passing time on a plane trip is filled in many ways. This group of football players elects a somewhat less rigorous sport for fun. Patriots guard Charlie Leo, defensive halfback Fred Bruni swap stories of other days. Leo made a name for himself at Indiana University. Bruni from Ohio State saw service with the San Francisco 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Six years of professional football. Quarterback Ed Butch Songen is a Boston College grad and a veteran of professional and semi-professional football since 1950. With the Patriots last season, he connected with 187 passes for 2,476 yards and 22 touchdowns. The coach's work is never done. So head coach Lou Saban and offensive line coach Bob Miller kick around a few facts and figures that may help in the Buffalo game. Lou Saban came to Boston after coaching three successful seasons at Western Illinois University. In pro football, he was captain of the championship Cleveland Brown team for four years. Bob Miller was with Saban at Western Illinois. Defensive backfield coach Joe Collier from Northwestern in conversation with Dan Marr. Patriots president Bill Sullivan was along with his wife Mary. And, of course, there are those who sleep in airplanes. Twelve inches of snow got there first for reserve seats. The white drifts covered every seat in the Buffalo Stadium and drifted on the field. But that stopped neither the crowds nor the pregame practice of the Patriots. 
The pros play in all kinds of weather. And practice, too, because practice is the mortar that puts a team together. The integration of specialists with the basic play formations. And then there's the business of getting the feel of a new ballpark. Food is an important part of a player's training. The right food to keep him in top physical condition. Before the game, every player gets the attention of the trainer. Bandages for support where they may be necessary. Heat treatment, massage. in a uniform with a little help and out in the field to limber up. This last minute practice of the field goal specialists may pay off in this game. ball on their own 38. Sowens passes to Stevens. It's a beauty. Stevens all the way down to the nine-yard line before Johnson and Wagstaff can finally nail him. Second down, goal to go. Johnson and Coco out wide. Flat pass on the right side to Christie. Christie takes it on the 10 and goes all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Capaletti kicked the point to even up the score. Seven all. Two minutes into the second quarter. Ball on the 37. Hand off to Christie. Mac Yoho breaks through to make the tackle. And it's second and six in the 41. Miller carrying. Straight ahead. He picks up a first down. The ball in Buffalo territory. Over the 50-yard line. 11 minutes left in the half. Song and carries and picks up another first down for the Boston Patriots. Herger and Atkins make the stop. Ball in the 20, first and 10. Score 14-7. Buffalo in front. Song and back to pass. Throws to Miller. And it's good for a first down by about three yards. Third down, three and a half minutes left in the first half. Miller carrying straight ahead for another first down for the Patriots. The Patriots on the move. On the 22. Sorkin's pass intended for Oscar Lofton in the end zone. Incomplete. But wait, a flag on the play. Interference called against Buffalo. That puts the ball on the one-yard line and gives the Boston Patriots possession. First down, goal to go from the one for the Patriots. Hand off to Christie. He plunges. Does he make it? No, he's inches away. Buffalo fans aren't happy. Inches to go, second down. Songen on a sneak, and he scores, making it 13 for the Patriots. Capaletti makes the conversion for a tie game, 14 all. In the third quarter, eight minutes to go, second and 10. Buffalo's ball on the 20. The pass is to Carlton. And he moves down inside the 10-yard line for a first and goal. Patriots in a tough spot. Carlton drilling the right side. But Hunt, Smith, Dee, and Addison all in to make the stop. Seven and a half to go for the Bills. Richie Lucas fading back. Decides to run. Merely gets away from the outside corner man of the Patriots and moves into the end zone for a touchdown. His best play of the season made it Buffalo 21, the Patriots 14. At the Patriots headquarters in Kenmore Square, reporters from Greater Boston's newspapers and radio stations gather for a news conference. Publicity director for the Patriots is veteran newsman Jerry Moore. Well, thanks, fellas, for coming to another press conference of the Patriots. And we're very pleased to announce today the signing of uh, Big Larry Eisenhower, the Boston College boy whom uh, the Navy coaches say was the best lineman that Navy faced all year. At the same time, uh, two of our old standbys, now that we're a year old, on my left, Alan Miller, played a lot of fullback for us. Uh, on my right is Tommy Addison out of South Carolina who made uh, 
who was voted all-star linebacker in our league, will now be employed full-time by the Patriots as goodwill ambassadors. The men of the Fourth Estate have been enthusiastic supporters of the Boston Patriots since the club was organized. And as for the fans, 27,000 of them turned out on the night of November 25th to see the Patriots play the Houston Oilers. History was made this night. The BU Stadium was filled at capacity. The first sellout game of the American Football League. You could feel the excitement in the air. With nine minutes to go in the first quarter, third and ten, Sungen back to pass, being rushed, throws to Christie on the 35. Mike Dukes makes the tackle, but a flag on the play. A 15-yard penalty against the Patriots, illegal use of the hands of offense. The ball on the 36-yard line. Quick clear pass to Christie. He's hit. Gets away. Look at him go. Gets away again. It's almost impossible, but you're watching it. Beautiful blocking. Christie finally nailed by Morrison Shirker on the 32-yard line. What a play. In the second period, no score. First and 10 on the 21. Songen to Christie, he goes straight ahead for a first down on the 35. Trask and Allen make the stop. <laughs> 23 yards later, first and 10 for the Patriots on their own 42. That's Stevens on the sidelines, and he's nailed on the 45 for the 13-yard gain and another first down. <laughs> Songen coming right back. This time to Johnson on the 39, a pickup of six. It'll be second and four in Houston territory. The Patriots rolling in the second quarter. Song and this time with a long one to Christie on the 20-yard line. And another first down for the Boston Patriots. First and ten to go. Hand off to Christie. He's got Stevens on the nine-yard line, throws, it's complete, and Spence is there to knock Stevens out on the eight-yard line. Fourth down with the Patriots on the eight. They try for a field goal, Gino Capaletti kicking, and it's good. The Patriots go out in front, three to nothing. A minute and 15 seconds left in the half. Houston steamroll to the eight in Patriots territory. Here, Houston's ball, first and goal. Jackie Lee with a handoff to Dave Smith, who throws in the end zone to Bill Groman for a touchdown. The kick was good. And it's Houston 7, the Patriots 3. The Patriots took it to the 27. Capaletti tried for a field goal. Fred Bruni holding. It's a fake. The pass is to Lofton in the end zone. And a flag on the play. The breaks of the game, some of them tough to take. A perfect touchdown play called back. Houston took over the ball on downs. Now on the Patriots' 24-yard line, Jackie Lee back to pass. This time long to Billy Cannon in the end zone for a touchdown. And the Houston Oilers score again. Houston converted the point for a 14-3 score. Patriots ran it back to the 28-yard line. Now second and 10, six minutes in the third quarter. Sungen back to pass. It's to Stevens on the midfield strike. But Spence pulls him out of bounds in the 49. The Patriots on the move once again. Again in the third quarter, Songen being rushed. Gets it away to Joe Johnson. Johnson's in the clear. That's Houston's Mark Johnson trailing, but Joe Johnson outruns him for the touchdown. Houston 14, the Patriots 10, with a minute and 45 seconds left in the third period. lost the ball in a field goal attempt. The Patriots take over first and ten in their 20. Songham passing to Johnson. And again, Johnson moves into Houston territory. Finally knocked down on the 38-yard line by Chuck Kendall, but the Patriots pick up 42 big yards. Three plays later on a fourth down. The Patriots kick. 
It's high and deep. Ken Hall back to pick it off for Houston. He grabs it and he's drilled to the ground on the 14-yard line. Dropped right on the spot. In the last quarter, Houston with the ball. Attempting a field goal from the 15. Roman holding. Blander's kick is good. And the Houston Oilers make it 17 to 10. With eight minutes left in the game, Boston's ball on the 31-yard line. Here's Sungen back to pass. Gets good protection. Throws to Crawford. Spence finally comes in to make the tackle on the 50-yard line. Three downs later, the Boston Patriots kick. So on a first down, Houston's Jackie Lee back to pass, gets plenty of time, and he hits Bill Groman on the five-yard line. Charter finally stops Groman on the two. First and goal for the Houston Oilers. The Boston defense held, but on the second down, a handoff to the fullback, Doug Klein. He cracks through to the touchdown, putting the Houston Oilers out in front. Houston kicked the point after, and the game ended. Houston 24, the Patriots 10. Professional football in Boston with the Boston Patriots brings autumn weekend thrills to thousands of sports fans. They come from miles around the Boston University field to see and to cheer. A sport, yes, so win or lose, sportsmanship is part of the game. But it's a professional sport, and win or lose, every effort is bent toward making it the best possible game. The future is important. Wherever they go, the Patriots are looking for the best. Building a team to win. Building today for tomorrow. Action. That's the word for football. Exciting action in every game. Things to remember for a long while. Like a sensational 65-yard run. sports and in the world of business professional football with the boston patriots is exciting and profitable for the individual and the community the thousands of people who cheered the patriots last season and the thousands who will cheer next season are the proof and encouragement of the team the boston patriots 